welcome to Your Energy Answers. And we're talking solar, batteries, and anything else energy today with Rollo Sheriff from Replenishable Energy. You guys are based in Cairns. How long have you been going? About 13 years, since 2011. Wow. So you've seen the solar coaster up and down. What are you reporting? Oh, well, can't really keep up with it. We sort of look after our own game. But um, over years, we've by default inherited quite a few orphans. And when we find out what the case was, they either closed up or um, doing something else or uh, went into liquidation, which mm. is very unfortunate. Just explain this to me. In solar, a lot of times you've got a company that comes, gives sells you a cheap system, gives you long warranties, and then suddenly a couple of years later, what happens? Well, uh, basically, they stop manufacturing of that product or you can't get access to it and they have a lot of warranty issues due to failure. And so it's very important to qu pick quality uh, than over just um, a, a cheaper or, or inferior product. Mm -hmm. So what did get you into solar in the first place? Well, I've always had a natural bent or interest in solar and I had solar on a a place that I had before, and it got me thinking that I'd like to be involved in this. So around 2010, I sort of started making inquiries and so forth, and then we decided to uh, set up the business in 2011 and start from a very small uh, base of just my wife and I, and then as uh, momentum built, we started to put our own team together instead of using subcontractors. Um, there is a place for subcontractors, but Predominantly, predominantly, we use our own employees uh, as we can get a handle on uh, time constraints or um, quality control of the project or an individual customer that requires some very detailed attention or specifics. So let, explain that to me for a minute. So is it better to potentially have for a solar business like replenishable energy your own employees or is it better to have subcontractors? Well, for us, yeah, some some people prefer subcontractors. Obviously, they've got a control and costs. That has never uh, been really our priority. Um, our priority is, is quality control and be able to deliver in a timely manner. And the only way we can do that is by employing and training them the way that we want things done done and um, uh, we can have more quality control in regards to their conduct uh, on site and off site and to make sure they get the appropriate training. So you basically have your processes and then your own employees have to really stick to those processes. Correct, absolutely. Otherwise, um, you, you lose control of, of what's happening in the, the workplace and what sort of work that they're performing. Mm -hmm. So from a point of view of replenishable energy, what do you actually guys offer? So we offer a more bespoke um, uh, delivery of um, find out what the customer wants and then we design to suit. Um, it's definitely not a, a, a one product fix all. Um, there might be certain companies that will use their certain product line that has that ability, but it depends on what the customer's requirements needs, wants and budgets. So with other words, there's really two types of solar companies. One that give you basically white slice bread, everybody gets white slice bread, while you look at the energy needs of the house much more detailed to give them really a customised system. Is that what I get it? Correct, yes. So not just the home, but we deal with um, all aspects of solar from um, domestic supply and then obviously we deal with small to medium business and even occasionally quite large businesses. But it doesn't matter what the customer have been uh, domestic for their home or a large business, you really need to find out where they're about <laughs> and, and empathise, put yourself in their shoes. What would I want to do to get the right outcome? And then talk more about um, uh, you know, the future expansion requirements because a lot of people, oh, my bill's only today. Well, hang on. You know, we've got the onset of uh, electrification of vehicles and a lot of machinery, um, even now on the uh, field in regards to um, uh, horticulture and so forth, are slowly moving into to the electrification. And that requires a lot of um, needs. And then we've got to sort of design for scalability. So you need solar sometimes bigger and bigger. Correct, Yes. And with that, uh, sometimes the, because of the 
constant pressures of price rise of the energy, um, and it's just been gone up again as of the 1st of July, there's a more benefits now to put a, a, not always a large amount, but just maybe a smaller amount of buff, a battery, because where we live in the tropics, there can be a whole lot of different weather events all in the one day. It can be sunny, then cloudy, and their demands might be um, just their home or in business where they require a constant supply of power, which could be at a fair amount during the day. We need to cover that buffering, and mm. that's where batteries can come in as well. What's a good battery? A battery, in my opinion, is something that is more universal. In other words, um, you can have a, a solar panels that can go through the inverter because solar works behind the meter, supplies loads first. And then any excess, in my opinion, good battery is absorb the excess DC straight into the battery. Right, right. And uh, you do sell a lot of sun grow batteries and sun grow inverters. What do you like about them? Oh, well, there's a lot I like about them. And um, I've also been a, a big fan of other good quality European inverters. But at the moment, in the last six to 12 months, um, one, just it, it's reliability. I, I think it's all one under one banner, banner uh, one uh, product company. Um, so there's no arguments. Uh, there's no. So what you're saying is, if you have a battery and an inverter from two different manufacturers, and there's something going on, you get a little bit of finger pointing sometimes. Uh, it has in the past. I can't always say it has happened, but definitely we've seen it. Oh well, you better talk to the battery manufacturer. Their 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 battery is tripping, mm-hmm. or the inverter manufacturer. And so there's a bit of a little bit of argy bargy. Uh, the other thing too is uh, with some of these um, European manufacturers, is that we they require that we install third-party relaying contactors, and that can be problematic as well, where the SunGrow is all built in. So you get one brand selling you the battery, selling you the inverter. So if something is wrong, you know that service department from SunGrow has to follow up. Correct, yes. And we've already installed many dozens uh, since the new uh, product range has been released uh, late last year. And what really showed us when we had that cyclone back in December 13th last year, Cyclone Jasper, the ones that had um, the new uh, products with the batteries, uh, even if they lost power because we had (coughs) torrential rain for five days after, which was well documented, and even if they lost power during the night because it wasn't much sun, it would black start the next day. Where other manufacturers that we've been dealing with the past and we installed not just hundreds, but in case thousands, and a lot of them, many dozens with batteries were failing. They had to require the grid connection to be able to ignite it again. Mm. Some of these people didn't get grid connection for not just days, but weeks, where the SunGrow is uh, certified grid off-grid, or what they call multi-mode, and it will fire up if there's enough light, let alone sun, to do so. Right. So if you really get a good size array and that hybrid system with the battery, theoretically, if you've got a blackout, you will still stay in power? Correct. Absolutely. So the SunGrove, we're talking single phase, with the larger single phase 10 kilowatt inverter, will back up uh, within less than 10 milliseconds Mm. and up to 45 and a half amps. Other competitors that I know of that we've been dealing with in the past will, with their 10 kilowatt, will only back up at night time 22 amps. So it's a no-brainer. Five kilowatts versus 10 kilowatts. That means you can back up air conditioning loads. You've got to manage it still, obviously, with the amount of battery storage that's in in situ. The other thing, too, is you can force charge it from the grid. It's technically possible, but you would require um, the uh, uh, inverter company, you'd have to ring their tech support, and they would have to do it, where um, the customer or us can go through through the app and actually set it up and knowing that there's a either a planned event so the energy company has in that immediate area localized area is going to shut power or an unplanned event someone hit a power pole or a cyclone coming in so you want to be able to have your batteries topped up right up until the loss of power My- so that's very very important other companies that I've been dealing with haven't got that ability that's not so all the ones that we've been dealing with so we're sticking to something that we know that works, and they've just introduced their three-phase range, which is now 15, uh, 20, and 25 kilowatt, 
and we've already installed a handful of those with battery and already it's proving its worth. Well, look, I like to say something positive about SunGrow too because uh, I know a local installer in Sydney and he wanted a contract for 4,500 systems uh, over three years mm -hmm. and I asked him uh, how many dead on arrivals did you get of the sun grow inverters because at four and a half thousand you know something's got to go wrong somewhere he didn't have a single one dead on arrival so that speaks volumes really for a company that's obviously making a good product yeah oh, we've only installed a few hundred so far and so far touchwood we've been the same but um, that's not to say can't occur and, and so, yeah. the, so the saying shit happens. Yeah. What's more important to get a good price and a cheap price for a solar install or to pay a little bit more and get maybe something that's a little bit reliable? Well, it's going to boil down to budget, but the common sense would rule um, that pay a bit more, uh, not excessively more, but for something that you know that sort of makes commercial sense to, to purchase. So be the inverter, the panels, uh, the whole of system parts that we put in um, and even and the labour, knowing that the company that you're going to be installing for you is going to be there to be able to support you. Um, this is where we've tried in regards to subcontract and I'm again not saying all subcontractors are the same. Some sales companies have extremely good relationships with them. With our experience, um, it was... Uh, not the best, not to say that we didn't have good installers, but again, if someone needs to go out because there's an error code and sometimes it can be just human error, we just haven't set it right, we can get back there very promptly and correct it. So you don't wait for that subcontractor to come fly you back in from Townsville and maybe help you out. You actually can reliably stand behind your after-sale service. Absolutely, yes. Sometimes you have door knockers coming into a region um, what do you think about door knock solar? Wow, it's just another form of uh, marketing, obviously, but you would have to question their <laughs> knowledge base. Um, I'm led to believe a lot of these companies would just uh, contract these people to make contact. Um, but when the consumer asks questions, they'll say, well, hang on, I'll refer you to someone else. And then there'd be a second or third stage, a lot of it done over the phone, sometimes face-to-face. Uh, we do both, face-to-face -face and over the phone. Uh, a lot of the customers that ring us, because we get a lot of referral, um, they already know people that we've done install for. So a lot of the um, anxiety of potentially dealing with the right people has been diminished due to either they've looked at our reviews and feel comfortable and or listening to their friends that had installs done by us. Mm. So when a door knocking team comes into town solar and they sell 10, 15 systems and then the crew comes in soon after, what about after sales when something goes wrong? Well, you'd have to think that it'd be very limited. Um, look, we, we've seen and not even inherited, but they just had struggled to get anything done and they've due to desperation, have run companies like us and not just us, other companies that are reputable in our area uh, to say, can you fix this? Well, so we'll have to pay a fee. Sometimes the consumer might think, well, hang on, it's warranty. You also look after, you know, XYZ or this company. Yes, we do, but you're not our customer. And to send one or two guys out to check the panels of this might require, you know, an hour or two hours work plus travel. And so... We do look after them, but yeah, unfortunately, what you're saying is the 10 or 15, I don't know how they're going to expect to service them. I don't know what sort of arrangement they got, but I would say would a lot of times be fairly substandard compared to what we could offer. Now, have you seen kind of really nightmare systems that have been installed on the cheap? Uh, absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, when we've had our field tech guys out because um, either orphaned or... Yeah, people have bought... Uh, or, orphaned, I just want to explain, means that neither the manufacturer of the product nor the installation company is still around. So the end customer... Or might either have, or. Yeah, yeah. And, and the end customer might have a 10-year warranty, but it's useless. Yeah. And, and a lot of times, the other third factor comes in is the previous owners have sold and new people have moved in and there's no trace or evidence, but they can see the, the inverter or the panels and that they can see that we are a representation of that and can they ask us to come out. 
So, correct. But give me some samples of what you've guys seen. So, the, the quality side is um, a combination of uh, inappropriate um, system that was installed in the first place, the sizing. That could also be budget restraint. Um, the quality of the uh, conjugating cabling, uh, how it's terminated, uh, some that we've actually had to get tagged out and find out what the what's going on because what does tagged out means? Well, what tagged out means is that it's unsafe. Oh, okay. Yeah, unsafe AC or DC or both, and so it is that dangerous that hang on a second, and it may not be understanding for the customer, but when you show and explain that, look at this, you know, this is not earth correctly or this is not terminate correctly, it can be very dangerous. Lovely sparks on the roof, look at it. Well, that and and, and there has been obviously well, well documented that um, there's been fires due to unsafe practices or uh, water ingress into DC isolators, which has been problematic in the past. So if I now come to you as a replenisher energy and I want to have a good quality solar system, do you tell me to get solar or get the solar and battery combo nowadays? Well, that's going to boil down to some people have got an automatic preference that they do or don't want batteries. And so you will then delve and ask specific questions. You would find out what their energy bills. In our area, uh, we tend to deal with um, uh higher consumption homes, hence larger properties. And uh, because of that, some of these bills that we're seeing now monthly, uh, like five, 600, um, we're dealing with a couple at the moment, 1,200, 1,400 a month in the summer, can be half in the winter. But when you start looking at those bills, they're still anywhere between eight and 11,000 a month, uh, sorry, uh, per annum. And because of that, well, the return on batteries Again, depending on where they're at and if it's suitable and their their budget, a lot of times it's even worth them borrowing through one of these green loans, amortising it over five to seven years, and they've got a payback that's like five or six years. Right, right. So if I want to buy a battery from you, do a sales job on me. <laughs> well, it, it, first things first is you've got to understand that if they've got a, a, a bill of this size and your bill is, say, um, 10 grand a year. Well, that's high, but we do have customers like that, and that can even be small commercial. We'll say if you want to be able to supply your load over, if the load's over just daytime or day and night, let's say a large, very large home, they're running air cons, means in the summer in cans, it's quite common that all the bedrooms, four bedrooms are running, um, plus they might start up to 10 o'clock and you know, have the family room air conditioned as well. And a lot of people have pools up our way and – all that comes into play, but basically, if they size their system in the in the in in the best world, you will supply it not only during the day, but charge the battery simultaneously to be able to supply at night time. But the subsidiary benefits are instant backup because we have in certain areas a, a, a lot of unfortunate common events with loss of power. It might be only. 10, 20 minutes, it might be extended period of time due to whatever circumstances. But in there's certain areas in our uh, in far north Queensland, both in Cairns on the Athens Tablelands, where they've reported 12 plus outages a year, average once a month. And that becomes problematic. Um, we've had some of the elderly that require um, uh, dialysis, um, certain medical issues. Um, people with um, surprising MS, they require climate controlled environment. That means certain temperatures, certain humidity and so forth. And and it then becomes critical, not just important, that they stabilize their supply of power. We just recently did one, I think it was back in March or April for a customer like that, that he just needs some assurities as best as we can provide to do that. And we did. And we told him to oversize the rate. We told him that you do this. Um, and a lot more storage than average. And he was willing to do that because he needs some assurities. So do you do any off-grid system and what can replenishable energy offer there? Yes, so uh, we do. Uh, it's not as common as what m one might think. Um, most of our area is in the Grid Connect area. But that said, um, obviously, um, we've supplied fuel depot stations like we just did recently up the Torres Straits and in areas on, in the Daintree 
we got one just coming up at the end of this month um, where we do provide off-grid solutions. Um, again, um, it's very important that uh, obviously a budget comes in, but rather people give them an expectation that being conservative, that expect more than what there's other companies that provide a cheaper solution, but it's half-hearted. And, and I'd rather not win the job and say, look, nice me, shake your hand, but really you got to allow for this sort of capital expense. And it's the same with um, people with grid connected with their batteries as well as off-grid that apply it as a capital expense to your home, treat it such as that, that it's a minor renovation because you're going to get an instant saving. It's not something that's going to only capital value or lifestyle choice. So with off-grid, um, make sure you've got the right size generator, type of generator and so forth with it. Right, right. You've been around for, you know, over a decade in solar. Has the whole installation changed, the product? What's the changes? Um, yes. Um, th there's been a lot of uh, regulations, both state and federal, in regards to uh, how we do the process of installation, um, as well as the 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 teams of people, men and women that are doing the installations to make sure that they're being certified correctly, that they uh, follow all the right processes in regards to the installation. And that's right down from the mounting the feet, being aware um, structurally. So they've got to consider structural integrity of the property, especially up our way due to wind loadings. If everything's not quite looking right, um, take photos, report back to our office to make sure or and also talk to the customer. Um, things like roof screws, we tell them your panel's going to be covered for 25 years on this roof. Any roof screws, don't get them done prior. You know, If we need to replace some in our underneath and you do it later, then we will do that. These sort of things is imperative because it can only exacerbate. So going back to the quality of the installation, how they terminate, spending a little bit more time using the right um, uh, breakers suitable for the job, the right size cabling. Um, we will tell customers that, you know, this is an older home. This was designed pre-air conditioning. That's how old it is. It's like 50, 60 years old. Uh, the switchboard has been slightly upgraded, so I can see it's, it's partially compliant, <coughs> but from the point of attachment, if it's an old area where it's an aerial conductor coming in, you can see the size of the submains coming in is below par. And you want to be able to supply load and export, we could upgrade this. Another company come in, ah, you don't need to worry about that just to, to win the job. So again, um, it's very important that you educate these people and the customers, um, both domestic and commercial, that size it correctly and spend the money where it's got to be spent. When replenishable energy started, you would have had a lot of money being paid for the feed-in tariff, but now it has come down a lot. What can I do about that? Well, by education. So if they've got electric hot water service or they've got their pool, make sure it consumes during the day. Um, and if anything they want to be able to get done, and if it's appropriate, preset their dishwasher, again, with their washing machine and or dryer, get it all done during the day, even slow cooker. If typically, people might use it once a week or every couple of weeks, and they'll want to cook something, um, they can have it on for eight to 10 hours during the day. So it, it, it sort of just re-educate and make people more mindful. The other part too is monitoring your system. Then you can optimize your self-consumption. If you can look at your system in real time, and you say, well, I've got excess energy and I've got a 10 kilowatt inverter here with X amount of panels, and um, but I'm only using two kilowatts. Well, in our area, you can only export single phase five kilowatts, so the seven. Well, potentially, I've got up to three kilowatts available, which is currently getting limited because loads first, export second. So two plus five is seven. So if it's a hot day, can I then remotely turn my aircon on? Yes, if you've got that capability, and some people do, especially an area in the, in the dry, uh, wet season, they can put it on dry and doesn't use as much energy because you don't really want to cool it. You just want it to take the moisture out. And especially in our tr very tropical areas, rainforests up in the valleys <laughs> or in the hinterland where it can get moldy, that stops the mold spores from growing. The other thing too is we say to customers, 
well, I don't need all that power in the in the summer. And being in the tropics, I know it's hard to believe, but we get climatized. So with swimming pools, use your excess energy, get yourself a heat pump if you want, and you can extend your swimming hours. Everything's relative. So you don't need it for five or six months a year because it's warm enough. Anything you want to cool your your pool up an area. Mm. But in the winter, it could be that three or four degrees cooler. Oh, it's a bit cold. So to extend it, load dump the excess energy. So you're not running air cons in the summer. Put it in the pool. So, so your solar and battery solutions from replenishable energy really increases the comfort level in the house. Correct. Um, and, and not just us, but I think in general the whole industry notices anywhere between 15 to 30% more consumption when a customer has a larger system that knows that's reliable and you know, treat it like the weather. If the weather's good, oh, I've got the power to burn. Mm. Oh, it's hot. You know, I run the air con. If the weather's not so good, typically it's a bit cooler and I don't need to use, I'll just cover my essential loads first. Mm, mm. And if they've got excess, you know, run the air con. But with the batteries, you can use it to buffer it. And um, that's that's a key component of the selling point. Plus, by default, it provides um, instant backup within 10 milliseconds. Mm. Look, you seem to know a lot of the technical jargons and how it all works with batteries and all that. Do you and your staff have any special accreditations or qualifications to do that? Yes, we do. So um, it's important that um, uh, learning not only the just straight down to the product specifications of each product that we're looking and test, but also get the appropriate accreditation, design accreditation, get the insulation accreditation for from that used to be the Clean Energy Council that's moved to the uh, Australian, uh, Association, Australian Association Standard for Solar. And that is important that they can be certified for Grid Connect battery system or off-grid system. So we have um, five of our electricians that are different levels of um, and then always gaining their accreditation that is, um, uh, Australian standards accredited but also uh, grid Connect, and we have two of our staff that are off-grid qualified as well. And then regular training or what? Yep, on regular training. Um, we got four apprentices as well that also gets ongoing training. Um, we've heard too from TAFE that they're moving more into the understanding, the mechanics behind battery storage. And then we also, with our financial help, getting them um, accredited for their battery and just learning. And even some of our... Um, uh, roof hands and uh, labour support um, in regards to that are keen to learn more and more and maybe considering getting an apprenticeship, which we encourage. So with other words, if I go with replenishable, I get staff that are well trained? Yes, absolutely. Mm, okay. Now, um, I was always wondering cans, you know. I've been there for holidays. I've just went down, you know, the Esplanade. I knew them not to go in swimming because there were a couple of crocodiles lurking about. I don't know much else about cans. What, what are the customers like? Are they a bit trendy dandy or hardworking or what? I think it's like anywhere that you can have a bit of everything. But um, in cans, what we're finding, uh, people either they've – multi-generation been living there and so they're very well uh, entrenched grounded um, to people like myself I left Sydney in the mid 80s and um, I, I moved up to Cairns and I've been there nearly 40 years there now and I'm like to think very well entrenched I'm probably considered even a local now however I um, uh, most of the people moved up have been from down south. It has um, uh, accelerated since COVID. Um, people want larger areas to live in, not to be so confined in smaller housing due to COVID and want lifestyle change. So a lot of people come up. And so we do find a lot of the demographic a, a bit more laid back for that or want to be, you know, as it takes time to develop the more laid back lifestyle. But a lot of people we find are working from home and since COVID, a lot of people, because they want to run air cons and it does get warm and very humid in Cairns in the summer period, that six, seven months, they're putting larger systems in and we're seeing that more and more. And I think since COVID started, which would be four years ago now, um, 
there's been a complete lifestyle shift and we're seeing more and more people now are focusing their attention, the home and even their business to be supported with solar and due to energy costs also simultaneously rising as well. So they basically want to create a bit of a nest for their family and by getting the battery and the solar installed, their dependency on the grid is less. The grid is potentially getting less reliable with all the EV charging coming going forward. Yes. So basically they decide, look, my house is my castle. Yes, absolutely. And you hit it on the head with EV. The electrification, the onset electrification of electric vehicles um, and machinery and all the rest that comes with it, um, electrification in general is requiring huge consumption. And when you start magnifying over hundreds and thousands of homeowners and dwellings in any area, the demand on that network is immense. And so where credit's due, the energy providers can see that. Both local, state and federal governments are seeing that. And um, because solar works behind the meter, by default, it's taken less load. And so there's opportune time now that with, again, with battery, that they can move to time of use tariffs. So if they need a top up um, or there's going to be an EV that's going to come in at night time or whatever it might be, they can charge um, both their car charging at cheap rates and their battery if they need to, and then move into shoulder period at night time in our case, from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. At, at a heavily discounted price. But if they've got batteries, a lot of the time, they'll have no demand needs from the network, so it costs them nothing. So what we're really saying is time of use means that when there's a lot of solar available, at that point in time, make the electricity a little bit cheaper so that basically the exported solar gets absorbed with EV charging or hot water generation and all that. And the energy retailers have to be creative about this because otherwise we have to increase the grid over and over and over, which means higher electricity prices. Correct. Yes, yeah. correct. Mm -hmm. and, and it's going to take a while to work through this and um, both on the network level, but consumers um, in our area in the last, say, two years, besides the higher prices, they're concerned about grid security. Um, for whatever reason, I don't know. I haven't really delved into it but there's been just loss of powers in pockets of our, even the new estates is losing power for no reason. Obviously there has been a reason, but no one can point it or our particular network provider is not telling us. You're not running around turning off little <laughs> switches? <laughs> <laughs> Might be a good point. But uh, I've seen that Charlie Chaplin movie where they suddenly the glass business got very busy when he employed the little, little young boys uh, <laughs> with stones. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> no, but... All jokes aside, so you're finding that the reliability of the network uh, is becoming less? Just in the short term, which is highly unusual, mm -hmm. um, you would think things over time get better. But the, the old saying is, and it's been a generalised term, um, uh, gold plating the network. Well, in some ways, the network has to be upgraded, but not just on a, a large level for high transmission but it needs to look after the older areas. And here in Sydney, um, is got a lot of old areas that still poles and wires and their power's not underground, mm. um, can be problematic. Mm. So if you've got something that can back up your little nest um, to support that load and cover it, well, it's gonna be less strain to the network. The other thing too is in the summer, and especially um, all along this East Coast, let alone West Australia and the interior, is when there's high demand for power, it, it causes huge strain, doesn't matter how much solar is, and that might be you know, from four o'clock till nine o'clock at night, that five <laughs> hours when the kids are home from school, the oven gets switched on, they're banging on the air comp because it's hot as, and um, the network is gonna struggle. So if you've got your own little power supply there, um, you don't have to be restricted or less power and you might go into brownout if you don't have it. And we've seen it. So having that just gives your own little world, your own little bubble, that sort of security. Peace of mind. That's it. And then because people say, oh, I need to get a generator. So up in our neck of the woods because, you know, we get cyclones from, you know, every so many years, um, and it might brush past and we lose power, let alone a full impact one. And that generator 
gives them that life support for power. So even now, the right type of generator can be integrated um, with these inverters to, to work in parallel and um, or directly connected in. And that's important. Right, right. So there are lots of uh, solar companies, I assume, in Cairns. What do I get with replenishable energy? What does set you apart? I think just spending time with people and, again, not just saying, oh, you need a 6.6 or a 10 kilowatt, 13.2 or whatever. Um, I will talk to the customer and my sales team and, and just find out more and more what is it that you know already. You know, don't assume they know nothing. Don't assume they know everything. Just find out what they are about. And I'll ask quite often, um, how did you hear about us so if they rang us direct? And then also just talk to them about whatever you think. And a lot of times it's by misunderstanding or, um, you know, uh, other friends that are so-called the experts are a bit misinformed and tell them not things that are, are accurate or true and then just bring them back in to say, well, there is a place for non-battery, definitely, depending on your budget, and there is definitely a place to integrate batteries or have it at least battery ready. The other thing too under our Australian laws with, with solar and claim the, the rebate is that if you put a small amount of battery, that enables one to legally claim more rebate for the panels because the rebate does adjust downward every year. So they're trying to wean us off that. And uh, that happens at the beginning of each calendar year. So 1st of January next year. So if we get the whole system, we only have to touch their roof once. Um, it's going to be a lot cheaper. And then we can build on that battery when suits. And so we might say to them, because a lot of our customers have got cash or to pay for it themselves, maybe borrow a bit of money with this green loan and and have that battery because you'll say you'll save a lot of nighttime costs, but instead of going out buying out that generator, this will help you. So it's all about educating the customer? Education is king. Knowledge is king. We all know that. So having the knowledge gives the customer, if you talk to them just openly, that peace of mind. But look, there are some solar companies who deliberately keep the customer uninformed because that way they can pull the wool over their eyes. <laughs> yes, it's like in any industry. And I get it, yeah, and I think you're right. Um, Do you find customers like that? Tell me a story. Uh, well, we come across a few just recently. won't mention any company names. Um, and what they provided them it is their whole program is to borrow um, – uh, interest-free loans. Now, we all know there's no such thing as a free lunch. And uh, when you explain that, well, the interest rate's probably okay, but what they've done is they've built it into the capital cost of the loan, so you're just paying back a whole lot of capital. What, what do you think they get paid? Oh, but it's interest-free. When you explain, the eyes open up a bit, because it sounds very exciting and very <coughs> tempting, but um, I have never promoted one. Um, I've looked into it. I've even considered it a couple of times, but I just can't do it. So because what it is is a five, six, seven thousand dollar product. I now make the seven thousand dollar product a nine thousand dollar product or higher. If it's if it's more than three to five years, it, we just saw one literally the other day. I quoted something like that was at about ten thousand mm. dollars. It was twenty thousand six hundred for the customer, but it was made the customer feel great yep. because he was getting interest free. But really, the capital cost was loaded up in the first place to and cover was... the interest over five years. Yes, and I don't think that particular company was doing anything untowards, but they she it was definitely not explained to them. And I said, "Well, look, I I know what they've done. the The product might be instead of ten because." We probably don't charge enough, but we just want to be provide a good product at a mm. good price and a good service, and we do a fair bit of volume. But they might charge twenty percent more. Okay, it's twelve thousand instead of ten, but the rest is capital cost, the interest over that five years. Now, I'd rather say to the customer, well, you know, we're ten thousand dollars, but if you go to a green loan at six percent or six and a half percent you'll probably find that it's still cheaper than what you're doing Oh, you'd be ending up at 18, not at 26,000. Yes. Yeah. Look, I find the interest-free loan argument actually rather misleading 
because it is not explained right at the beginning to the end customer that you are paying for the interest in the cost of the system. We buried that and now we stand there with the waving the hand of the golden opportunity but we actually pulled it out of your back pocket the other way. And I actually don't like that. Mm, yeah, I'll second that, absolutely. And that's why I've told my team we're not here because we do get people out, well, what about this? I've been off this. Well, that's okay. that's great, that's good. But ethically, morally, we, we won't support it. Mm. So, um, and, and don't get me wrong, we've lost a few jobs here and there, but it's some of that, okay, at least... We've explained, um, and certain circumstances, that's all, that's all they can do. Mm. Um, and and the, the other problem with that is because um, some of these companies will get the solar company to underwrite it. So if they pull out early, I'm not saying all, but there's a couple of them out there, and I won't promote that either. It's, what does that mean, I will pull out early? Well, I don't know if it's still available, but I saw a few a couple of years ago where um, – uh, a couple of well-known brands in the <laughs> in the in the finance industry um, is you can give a ten thousand dollar loan to a customer like we actually were meant to sell it, give it to the customer. We pay three thousand dollar the cost up front, so that covers their interest. But if they don't pay back, we wear some of the cost. But yeah, and I've heard certain solar companies, um, and I was told this by other finance companies, but that's what they were doing. Now, I, I don't know if that's still happening, but um, it really opens your eyes up to just buy beware. Look, uh, let's, it's getting all a bit too complicated for me, but the very simple thing is you will pay interest on anything you borrow. The company who gives you the interest rate up front is a little bit more honest than the one that says interest-free because they uploaded it in the first place. And in that case, please make your inquiries and get more than one quote. Correct. Don't be just fooled by interest-free because you possibly get the thing for one-third less from another company who will charge you interest, but overall you might be still better off. Correct. Mm, okay. Now, um, after sales service, I mean, solar, it sits there, the panel doesn't move. Is it needed? Yes. <laughs> Look, for a number of reasons. Um, if I was to go local Pacific where we are, uh, we do have an issue in certain areas with mould or red mould. And if you your roof, uh, it acts like a bit of a sponge. So when you get dew or rain, that mould, as it starts to grow, will keep up moisture and absorb. That can create rust on your roof. So a lot of people when they think about it, yeah, it makes sense, but they're not aware because the thing, it's like a sponge. Most of the time where it's sunny, it doesn't do much at all. But every night it absorbs a bit of moisture and it grows a little bit more and that happens at the same time on the solar panels. So if you're in an area where um, panels are not uh, a right pitch orientation or you're right near rainforest, that mould will also absorb dust uh, clay dust, uh, because we have a lot of rural areas in our activity and uh, you know, new estates where there's a lot of carving up the land and dust um, lifts up and gets blown around and it settles on these panels. The panels will create a hot spot if you don't clean those panels um, consistently at least once a year. You know, depending on, again, where you are, we might say every six months. We don't recommend they clean themselves because we don't want them to hurt themselves. Some of the people that are fit and young and are agile, if they want to wear a harness, go and do it. Otherwise, we tell them to seek a professional. So that's one level just in regards to maintaining a no high pressure washing because we've seen that a few times where, what the, what's going on here? This panel looks like it's been blasted by three or 4,000 PSI. What's going on? It should be soft wash. Oh, sorry, that's my fault. You know, I just got my gardener guy that does my driveways every 12 months to get up on the roof. Well, sorry, but you've null and void your warranty. You know, that's it's a given. So that's something we're very conscious of these days. On the inverter itself, um, being the main thing we tell customers, keep your internet going. If you change your router, make sure you connect it back up so that you can monitor your system 
if you think there's any adverse changes, then that's not because you're using mm. more power, but just in regards to production, and more importantly, really test it when it's a clear ski, s- sky, um, there might be something happening that needs more investigation. And if it's something that could be human error from our part, we might go out there, pff, no cost. Sometimes what we've seen is they've had other works or electrician, and a few times we've had where electrician, nothing um, has done the right thing, turn off the solar supply main switch which is working, turn off the main switch, gone up on the roof, turn off the isolators, and not put them back on again. We get a call, something's gone on here, and, we, and thankfully they had monitoring. Well, back on this date, 2.2 months ago, your solar system looks like it was turned off. Well, I can see the consumption, so so that tells me someone's been up the roof. Oh, no, 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 when they think about it. And I said, well, look, if there's something that we haven't done, we will charge you. If it's something that someone else... Um, no, hang on. If it's something that you've done, you won't charge. No, but if it's something that they've done, we will charge, you know, mm. it's someone else. And so we've seen that. But that's just, again, human error. Someone's forgotten because they're so focused on getting their own works done. Mm-hmm. Um, but in general, if you maintain your system, um, just even the inverter, keep it wiped down, check behind the inverter because they've all got heat sinks. Um, a lot of the inverters, they are either naturally aspirated. Um, some have got fans with them. Just listen to them. Make sure the bearings are working. Check to see if there's any error codes. But overall, it's a pretty easy thing to maintain. More the panels in our area, um, and also just make sure there's no birds nesting or anything if you can mm. um, but, blow but, them out. But, I mean, some companies uh, that you buy the solar from, they probably would never come back. Do you have a full after sales service program where you even actively maybe contact people after a few yes, years? Yes, we do for a couple of reasons, just to touch base. Um uh, quite often they'll ring us because they want to expand the system or, hang on, we've sold because um, people do move around and we say, look, it might be a good time to check the system over and we provide a charge a fee if it's just a simple maintenance service. Um, what, every two years or so? What is it, uh, the time frame? It, it depends on the type of system, but, yeah, typically every two years. Some of our commercial jobs have contracts in place where it would be annually and mm. that's provided. And depending on the scope of works, they also might require cleaning and we will organise a, a company that solar panel cleaning to get it done as part of our contract. Mm. Does replenishable energy do uh, any solar for commercial and is commercial solar worth it? So firstly, answer yes. We do a, quite a lot of commercial installations and we have done quite a lot over the years. Um, and... Uh, commercial is a bit more complex, but in general, any solar on any roof that's operating during the day is a no-brainer. So yes, um, some of the larger um, companies have certain tariffs which we need to be mindful of to make sure that we don't put too little, or too much um, on it. But uh, yeah, most most companies. Um, definitely would benefit from solar, absolutely. What's the payback on a commercial system in a good situation? Uh, Typically a a bit longer, especially if there's demand charges involved. Um, It used to be six to seven years. A lot of them now are three to four years. Uh, One, because cost of energy has gone up. Um, But with the onset of batteries now, even just putting a bit of battery in to reduce some of those demand charges can actually accelerate their payback. I know it sounds a bit weird, but a lot of the costs are hidden in demand charges, cost so many dollars per kilowatt hour. Um, That means if you use a certain amount of load at one particular point over that month, by putting some battery storage can reduce a lot or completely negate their demand charge. So if I have a commercial uh, building or business like a car wash, a childcare, where I use electricity during the day, dental, whatever... Would you be able to come out and work out my bill that I hardly can understand and tell me what the best option is? Yes, yes. Um, all, all our um, solar team in sales understand all that. It's more about um, um, getting to understand and, and again, working location-specific. That's your solar system that we could potentially look at. We look at the um, 
the the the, the roof and um, how much real estate's on that roof and if it's so, suitable, so if it's structural integrity, and then we design the system. We kind of was promising to get zero bill, that it'd be uh, not impossible, but you wouldn't want to rule that because weather can change a lot. But if we can reduce it substantially, you know, 70, 80% with the right amount of um, real estate on the roof with solar panels, mm. it can make a huge difference. And their payback, we have seen them as low as two, two and a half years. Wow. Yes, in certain cases, but depending on their um, tariffs. Um, but most of the time, uh, it's more like three and a half to five years. But then if you get 10, 15, 20 years out of the system, you possibly make hundreds of thousands of dollars. In savings, absolutely, yes. Because not all commercial can get a feed-in, depending on the size of the system mm. um, in our area. But uh, absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it, 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 what it does, it, it gives them a big insurance protection. That's what they're doing. They're paying for um, a, a reduced cost or reduced rate. So if they were paying, let's say, $6,000 a month in energy, mm. and we can get their total energy down to, even if it's only two thirds, mm. to $2,000 a month, well, that's a net saving straight away of $4,000. You divide that over 12, that's 48000 Now that system cost might be 200000 With that getting interest involved and working that equation, mm. Yeah, that's typically roughly just over a four-year payback. Mm. So mm. there's definitely benefits. But the other benefit is that for your business, if you're energy dependent, you're not one day suddenly nearly go to ruin because the energy companies decide to whack it up by 20%. Correct. And that's why it can provide a big hedge. And that's what we say even on residential as well as commercial, solar is nothing more than a big hedge. If we can reduce your bill, because we don't know from one year to next if you're going to get a feed in or not, mm. or what the size of the feed in, um, to, and as more and more solar gets in, our feed in might reduce a bit. Mm -hmm. Now, let's say I'm in Cairns, I've got a nice house, biggest roof ever. Do you tell me that I should have the biggest system and whack it all over my roof and everywhere needs a panel, or what's your calculation? No, not always. Um, it depends, needs, wants, and budgets. So, with the onset of electrification, um, and depending where they are in their life, you know, if they're progressive people that might be at a certain age, 30, 40, 50, even 60 year olds, um, we get a lot of people now that want the future proof. So we will even work with some builders, say, we probably suggest spend a bit more money, upgrade to three phase supply, mm. gives them three times the amount of power that they can uh, get from the grid to support, which enables a solar system to be technically three times larger and cover any potential, like the <coughs> charging EVs during the day or whatever else that they want to do. So it's just creating some future proofing. So at times, yes, we've had customers fill the roof. Mm -hmm. We just did one very recently. For a customer, their bills was $14,000 a year, large residential acreage where we put 54 and a half kilowatts of panels, 80 kilowatt hour storage, and 30 kilowatts of hybrid inverter. And I told him that you might be, in the summer, he can hit 180 kilowatts a day. So I said, start with 80, but you may need another bank of 40. And he already texted me before we went on holidays. I think you're right. More batteries. More batteries. Right. Um, what's farm solar? So farm solar rural, uh, in our case, has a lot to do with... Um, combination of things depending on the industry uh, a big one is irrigation so we had certain thankfully they're sort of moving away from certain tariffs which was rural which was very expensive uh, to more mainstream tariff supply but farm solar is um, supporting whatever the industry is and that could be anything from uh, in the growing industry like cane or certain cropping Bananas, uh, coffee. Absolutely, bananas and coffee. And we have done quite a number of systems where we'll support that. Just using their very big pumps, some might be uh, a, a 30 kilowatt pump, 50 kilowatt up to 100 kilowatt pumps. And they are going for many hours of the day. We will try and offset some of that cost by putting that solar in to um, cover the solar, cover the load before even is gets pulled from the grid because remember solar works behind the meter so a lot of people use that also 
because of the temperatures up there and they need to chill their bananas down to 14 to 16 degrees or their avocados, depending on the season or whatever cropping they're doing. Um, and that in dairy is they've got a lot of refrigeration, not freezing so much, but refrigeration. And that requires a lot of uh, consumption. Thankfully, we have very good correlation with solar and um, loads of refrigeration and conditioning because we just hit the shortest day of the year, 21st of June, a couple of weeks ago. But now 21st of December is the longest day. In our neck of the woods, it's just over two hours difference. So the correlation, trying to cover their load of irrigating, especially now where we're going to the dry season, they're using more. And as the sun starts to get more longer days, that supports that. So we're fortunate up our neck of the woods, there's a very good correlation. We're down here, in daylight today, I think I woke up to 10 degrees. It's all about heating, but you've got short days. Mm. So I think mm. we're very fortunate where you are. So in regards to farming, uh, yes, there's a, a very good uh, benefit for solar, depending on the industry. So look, Rollo, you come across really in the conversation here as a bloke who doesn't just come in and within two minutes whaps on and says you need this and this system. You really seem to dive deep into everything that the customer wants. So from a sales angle point of view, you will take quite a bit of time to get the right system. Yes, times I probably talk too much about it, <laughs> um, but the, 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 it's it's know the customer, you know, really get to know them. I, I, quite often I'll say, I don't think this is gonna be suitable for you, for whatever reason it might be. Um, so but, you're talking yourself out of the sale, do you? Yeah, sometimes I'll just say, well, it's, it, they might have some very high expectation and I don't want to dull the expectation, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, they haven't got the appropriate roof space or this or whatever else. Um, a couple of times just recently, they've got really stuff or roof space, but the way their energy is, I said, we can actually arbitrage the power by just putting solar inverter and battery and using the grid to charge at the cheap rate during the day because they have high consumption at night time. I said... Really, we can put a little bit of solar in, but it's not going to be able to support that. But by purely that, and they wanted some backup. And so they're going down that track. So you actually, it's very bespoke solution if you go with replenishable energy. Yes, it, because it's trying to work out, put empathize, put them so, yourself in their shoes. What would you do? A lot of people know a bit about solar because they've learnt. We do see there's a lot of confusion because, like you said, there's a lot of cheap ads on social media, and then they go, "Oh, but I was expecting only pay three or five thousand dollars." Well, true, you can do that, and you go down that track. You, you've come to us for a specific reason or referred, and it's all about you're paying for the experience, the knowledge, but also inevitably um, the, the the products that we use, but the blender product. What ratio of product? What if we do battery? How much battery? How much solar? Like I'm conservative, so I would say customers put as much solar as you can, because when it's wet, it's wet. But because we're only sixteen and a half degrees from the equator, the sun is very overhead. A lot of customers and even solar companies, especially from down south, don't realise that just north of Rockhampton is the line of Capricorn. That area there, the sun is actually slightly to the south of us for 94 days of the year, so either directly overhead south. So I say to customers, put them on the south. Oh, but I've been told. So forget what you've been told. I'm telling you reality. When you explain it and give them an explanation why, they are, oh, he knows. Well, we have to know. And, and quite often the south side will do better in the summer. That correlates with their increased loads than the north. Mm -hmm. When you tell them that, oh, that makes me feel a lot better. Yes, it will sag in the winter, but your loads are not there. Mm -hmm. So it's... So those three to six thousand dollar systems, you get poor quality gear, you get a sales guy who's a sales guy and doesn't understand solar, and you get no after sales support in a couple of years' time. That's probably more generalised to uh, probably a large extent, yes, because they've got quotas to fill because they're being contracted. To they're selling sell. on volume, quick, yep. bang, bang, bang. So with my team, they've made it very clear from us, myself, to say, don't, I don't want you to sell anything they don't want, or I think you don't want. Not sure you can talk to me. The so what, you're not saying to your sales guy, sell as much as you can? No, God, no. It, look, at the end of the day, uh, uh, something I learned in regards to sales from 
uh, a different industry. Rollo, if you talk to people and their needs and wants, and yes, it is a numbers game, but the reality is if you give them what they want, the pen will come to paper anyway because they'll trust you. They'll trust your judgment. They'll, they can see the reason behind you want to go down that track. Whereas what you just said before with the sales company role, and yes, there's quite a lot in the industry where they're just totally marketing machines and they've got their script down pat and they've got answers to most things. Brainwash the customer. Yeah. And, oh, but he was very good. But yeah, I bet he got you to sign up for something <laughs> that cost double the price. But yeah. That's that's what it's about. And designing to suit bespoke, you know, make sure that they get what they need. But quite often I'll tell them, you really need more than that. Oh, but that's all he said. I said, forget him for the time being, park him aside. I'm explaining why. And when they get it, because we got the data, they understand. Now, do you get any repeat customers with replenishable energy? Plenty. Absolutely plenty. We got three just this week alone that I heard of. And what, hap what happens? Uh, Auntie Elma thought you're a good guy or? Uh, yes, uh, referral repeat, but actually just um, existing customers um, that bought a new home or hollow house or they expanded their business or whatever they might be, obviously as well as the immediate people that either they work with or employ and obviously family members. And um, because I reiterate that and I tell my sales team the same thing is to make sure that understand them. And when I say that, they they feel more at ease. Yes, we'll get to the nitty gritty of cost and geez, that's a bit more than I expect. But you know, there's nothing for nothing in this world. And as long as they understand, I said, well, look, you may not be ready for this. Let's just do stage one, just get a battery ready. But I would suggest you use this panel. There's a whole lot of things. And when it comes to like panels, people think, oh, you know, we customers come with preconceived sometimes, not all of them, just a minority. I heard this panel's best. That's a great panel. But I'm going to suggest this panel because it's got lower voltage, higher current, and I can put more panels together <coughs> because when the weather's inclement, which we get a lot of, it's all about the kilowatts on the roof. And there'll be some days, trust me, you may not have solar before. Some days you can't have enough solar panels. So by doing this, we can give you a larger array. We can do this, and you you just educate them. That's mm, all the key. Mm, mm, mm. Panel position is that important at all? Yes, it is. We're quite fortunate up our way again because we're close to the equator that you can literally put it north, south, east, or west. Um, I'm not that familiar with it, it, other areas, obviously Sydney or Melbourne or you know our friends in uh, Tasmania, but um, in our case. Panel position is obviously important to a large extent, depending on some customers have it for aesthetics. They don't want it on the front of the house. They don't want this, and you work with them, okay? Sometimes a bit of education. But if you show some other jobs that you've done that, hey, it's in block formation, we'll put in landscape, and it's all black rail, whatever it might be, it can look aesthetically pleasing. Mm, mm. Uh, but we've seen a lot of, it's worse than a dog's breakfast because they've just slapped it on literally their panel placements just what the you know what and uh, we've gone in and had to fix some other jobs up even while they're around because they said no nope, that's it we've done our job so panel placement for a lot of reasons obviously um, most people consider production but in our case <laughs> I'm happy like we've done with our, my own home east west split some north um, if they haven't got enough uh, real estate on their roof, definitely look at the south as well. And people say, again, you educate them, they don't mind that. It also means if you put them in areas that are not so um, optimum in their production, they might develop more mould. You might have to clean them a bit more, but there's a reason why we might put them there. If I got a beautiful architectural designed home, and I'm a bit worried about solar making it ugly. What do you recommend? Well, I, we just got some plans for a customer the other day. Um, where is uh, we'll digitally map that those plans, so they've got a bit of an idea. Um, it's something that we encourage working with their uh, home design or architect. Um, we like to get involved in before. We don't want to change too much what their idea is because. Um, Excuse the expression, but I've said it a few times. Some of these architects, you know, 
this home was designed by an architect's wet dream. It's like so many <laughs> hips and valleys and whatever else, but suitable for solar? No. So um, few, uh, some direct and indirect doing with builders, hey, try and make it a bit more simple. Uh, Skilly and Roos, thankfully, becoming quite in vogue in our area and um, works wonders. It's easy to put solar on. You can make it look neat. But, yes, there's sometimes it can be very challenging to find a, a – a, a, and when they've got high loads but minimal roof space, it, it can make it a, quite problematic. So what do you do then, solar carport or freestanding or what? Well, not so much freestanding. Um, we work with what they got. Um, again, with the onset of time of use, um, as I said, we've just only done literally a handful where not much solar but battery storage charge cheap during the day. So it's still going to save their cost. Not as much as having solar, but then they're not paying the expense of the solar, mm. but they can use their batteries and arbitrage while it's still available, charge cheap during the day and release that stored energy when the cost would be higher. Mm. But it's still cheaper than our, what they call levelized cost with, with, with um, in our case, Ergon, which just hit 34 cents, just over 34 cents a kilowatt hour. So you can charge at 14 cents, I think it is now, um, during the day, and you're still saving yourself uh, 20 cents. that 20 cents. Mm. What about full black panels? Do they make it look prettier on a solar house? It can do, um, absolutely. Uh, typically, there's a bit less production output due to black um, because it absorbs more light and heat, and heat and electricity don't mix. But yes, um, at times, all black. Though it's a bit of a misconception, <laughs> depending obviously on a the design aspect, because most people when they look in the roof, what do they see? Most solar panels today are black framed. So they just see the black frame. They don't get to see, yes, a little bit of white dot in between. And there's less than that of today because a lot of the new panels, due to trying to make it more efficient, are reducing their whole footprint of the, the cells on the roof, putting more cells in, but packing them tighter so you don't see much white lines. And actually, some of the new ones, those panels we were talking about before, um, uh, ACO or pronounced ICO, um, they're all metal back. And they can either give you black or or the one with the little white line in it. If you do go for a black panel system, do you try to give them black rails as well? Yes, and even black end caps as well. So describe a system like that. Then basically it's all full black in one go, is it? Correct. Yeah, all black in one go. Um, and the other thing too is, depending on the panel, we try and we do less and less in portrait these days, where you might panels here, panels there, depending mm. on the screw lines. But as in our area, panels are getting bigger and bigger. Um, we put the rails in landscape. The other thing too we're finding is, due to bird nesting or leaves or trees, the it's easy to blow out in between if the rails are up and down and the mm. panels are across. Also, cross braces the roof more as well and provides another air gap for insulation. Right, right, okay. I heard lately the term smart home. I'm not smart enough to understand it. What's the bloody smart home going forward? Well, there's a few different types of smart homes, but basically um, some of the higher-end homes that we've seen over the last couple of years or in quite a few years now will integrate um, where everything is touch button or um, by app and it could be anything from uh, their lights, um, the shade of their lighting, um, electric curtains, uh, everything is fully automated so that you can, from what touch a button, set your uh, air conditioning on, you can... Um, even right down to the pool, the pool hot water. Um, and in this case, with solar integration, the, the solar inverter, it can release power to to heat things or chill things and store energy and release that energy. Mm. Do you get a lot of palm trees and shade and stuff on solar system? What do you do? Yeah, yes, we do. So, it, it, and that's probably our bane of our existence is palms. It was a big thing planted in the 80s and 90s in far north Queensland, and they're not native to Australia, just to let you know. Um, most not anyway. So basically, um, the golden canes and so forth, Alexander palms and bits and pieces, they grow, they're short when they start, 
they grow quite high <coughs> and they, it can cause cast shade lines across solar panels and that can be problematic. Um, to do that, we optimise. Um, we tend to use more string inverters these days than anything else and at times where it can be more problematic, we'll use uh, DC optimization, so it can be what they call partial deployment. So are you more of an end phase or a solar edge kind of guy? Uh, probably neither these days. We do we've done a lot of both. More solar edge over the years. Um, solar edge has we just did one literally. I think it was yesterday where we added to an existing system. So that's one solution, but without getting into brand name specifics. Um, the problem with uh, solar edge or Enphase, because Enphase is AC coupling, you can't oversize the array because you're limited by the inverter output. If it's a 350 watt micro inverter or 360 or 380, if it's single phase, 10,000 watts is maximum. So you might find that we can only put 24 or 26 or 28 panels um, uh, connected to it. Um, and those panels typically would be higher but we're limited to that. We're a string inverter, and if we need to optimise, we might partially or fully deploy um, a, a third-party product like Tygo or something so that we've got double the size array that we're allowed to put on so it can have dual functionality. It can supply load first as a priority, charge the battery, and if it's big enough, you can export all at the same time. So it's the old saying is have your cake and eat it too. With the uh, selective deployment, which we do quite regularly, we might put, you know, there's four trackers with the SunGrow. One tracker, we can see that's different orientations or a bit of a shading. So we'll selectively deploy those 12 or 13 panels on that string. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how we try to mitigate those risks. Okay. Let's say you've had a sales guy. He's not fully trained up yet. He's still on his learning feet. He's gone out and sold a uh, single-phase system in a three-phase area, and now you come on site and realise there's additional costs for that end customer because your sales guy kind of got it wrong. What yeah. do you do in that case? <laughs> <laughs> and it has happened. So it depends on what has been sold. Um, um, but are you going to try and wiggle onto that customer the bit of extra cost? Uh, yes and no. It depends on the, the, the situation. If it's a lot of times where it's just a five kilowatt inverter, sometimes it's all right to have a single phase left on three phase. We're allowed to do that. You can't have in our area unbalanced loads of more than five kilowatts. So mm -hmm. if you've got five kilowatts on phase A and B and C are not used, that's all right. Are you better to use a three phase solution? Yes. But um, we would typically not get into that situation due to our educating our sales guys anyway. Um, it's more the case that um, we might leave that but add another system because never we, we actually see it anyway done by other installers and they want to upgrade. So we might either take that out and add more panels and give them a 10 or 15 kilowatt inverter that's going to be better suited for their situation. Well, that's true, but you're not really answering my question, which is somebody stuffed up, you guys get to the job. We would realize... wear the cost, and we have done that a couple of times. If you really want to know the question, yes, it's our fault, we fix it. Look, the buck stops with us. So, um, And that's something that I've seen with other sales companies where they come in and they've got all these disclaimers, haven't done their due diligence or site inspection properly, and the switchboard needs to be upgraded. The point of attachment is very light on. Um, the size of the submains is not adequate, and there could be two, three, three and a half thousand dollars additional cost there. Whereas we'll be up front, and this has happened, this has even happened to us a few months back, <coughs> where Oh, but he said, I said, great, go with him. And that why I remember this particular customer is he came back, you're right, I ended up having to spend $2,400 to replace a switchboard and upgrade the supply point of attachment. I said, there we go. He said, in hindsight, I said, yeah, hindsight's a wonderful thing, but we did tell you and he gave you a cheap solution, you don't need it. So you should have told him to wear the cost. 
no, 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 they push the point. So you should have told me. I would have told you how to go to, to go them because it's not fair. Like we're on an even playing field there and we're up front and open that we know the rules within. Sometimes we'll get clarity on the rules, mm. but if you're staying to upgrade supply, you need to get it done, you know. Mm. Fair enough. What about any warranties like workmanship warranty? What do you give people? Uh, 10 years now, uh, 10 years workmanship <laughs> warranty. Um, and we also talk to the customer about um, the product warranties for both the inverter, solar panels, and if they got battery storage as well. Um, we talk to them about that and all their data sheets are all shown up as well because obviously over time everything sort of starts to um, – uh, Degrade a little bit, and you go through that. Most people understand that. Um, thankfully, touch wood, most of ours has not been much of a workmanship. Occasionally, again, human error. They might have missed something or done something, and it shows up because we also watch our systems. And I say, did you plug in that last? It's not showing, mm. and because we can check it, and it's that input's not showing on the system. Um, and we'll rush out and say, look, we think there's something amiss there and we'll go and fix it. Mm-hmm. Now, um, with replenishable energy, you said you give 10-year workmanship warranty. Can you explain what the workmanship warranty includes? Yes. Yeah, so the workmanship warranty is the uh, our, the workmanship that we provided in regards to uh, the construction of the feet and the rail and what we've done um, so that – if there's anything that we've done that's untoward, that um, let's say a conduit starts getting loose or something, yeah. Like that, well, is it? Uh, so depending on the if it's a structural a- mm-hmm. aspect, uh, because we've seen it both where we haven't put a proper clamp in place and we've gone back and fixed it, or they forgot to <coughs> screw it on, mm-hmm. and we'll come back and do it. We had one recently in as well like that. Um, hang on a second, that's not right, and we've rectified it literally two-minute job because one clamp wasn't done right. Mm. Um, and um, what we in that particular case, we actually screwed it in, but where the customer's ridge cap was, there was no batten there. Mm. And that opened up a bit of can of worms. So we ended up pop riveting that. It was only in that section um, because he had wood rot there and it had fallen through. But the roof had just been resheeted. So that's now under investigation with the roofer and they're probably going to let us know that we have to pull sectional panels off um, because it just literally got re-roofed. So you would have expected the timber to be good? Absolutely, yeah. Mm, interesting. Um, let's say you turn up at my house in the morning to give me a solar and battery system. What is the process? How long will it take? So typically depending on how many staff that are attending that site and the size of the solar solution that we're putting in, like size of the array and the complexity of it, um, most of our solar battery storage would be a day, day and a half typically, sometimes two days, where if we put a 20 kilowatt solar system and battery storage with a bit of a roof run and so forth, and if we have four or five guys, it would be typically about a day and a half to install. But what, they turn up in the morning, turn my power off and I've got lost everything during the day? And No, so uh, communications, they're very important. So um, they don't need to turn off only when it comes to uh, working the main switchboard or also if they're working the ceiling space. So they try and coordinate that together, more like in the afternoon once the boys have done all their roof work and they've got to start to DC runs, is at that same time our electrician will then work on the board and he might then go to the pillar box, take out the fuse, or if it's a property pole, take out the fuse and then isolate it so our boys can go into the ceiling space to be safe. They'll have their head torches on and start running the DC cable while he works on the AC side. Hmm. If I want to back- That could take only typically, say, two hours. So we try and minimise the disruption to the customer. Right. Okay, my ice cream won't melt. <laughs> if you don't open up that freezer. Right, right. Now, battery... Um, can it just fit anywhere on the house or is there actually a bit of a science to find the right spot for the battery? Well, it's a combination of, you call it science, we would call it what's um, uh, appropriate. We've got certain standards, Australian requirements for that, where um, we, we can't be near windows or any door openings. 
Um, what and, about timber homes? Well, if it, it can be on timber homes, um, either external or in the garage area. Uh, it can't be any living area or near living area. Um, and then we would, if, if it's a timber home, we might put a sheet of form ply and then sheet it with some AC sheet on top so that it gives it some sort of fire rating. If it's underneath a home... Is that like a fibre sheet or...? Correct, yes, right. fibre sheeting, yep. Mm. And we'll also do fibre sheeting if it's a two-storey underneath on top of it so that it's... I don't know if it's going to stop. It, th there's low risk of fires anyway with stationary storage typically mm, mm. compared to uh, mobile of EVs, but there is obviously still a risk. Um, thankfully, the type of batteries you use are the heavier lithium-ion phosphate batteries, so you know there's a lot less reduction of other chemicals like cobalt and that, and that can ignite mm. or create um, a thermal runaway, but there's always still a risk. So by putting it where it's got to be compliant for Australian standards is where we search. And sometimes that can be a bit of a challenge. So we will talk with the customer. We think it's probably best here. He might think there and we find a compromise that's still going to be suitable and compliant. Mm. What do you think of the Tesla Powerwall? They do look sexy. Look, I, I we've done uh, well over 100 over the last few years. But um, in recent times... Um, until they probably bring out their third stage, is it's only an AC couple solution. Meaning it's also not modular, is it? You can't really easily expand. You get your 13 and a half, that's what you do. But when you need 18, 19, the modular solutions can possibly be a little bit better. Uh, yes. So, and that's what we find. The other thing too is um, the way power walls work, they're great product. They do work very well, but they have their limitations. And one of the limitations is is that in Queensland, we can only put a five kilowatt inverter in grid tied, AC <laughs> coupled to a Tesla Powerwall because underneath that Powerwall, it's got a five kilowatt inverter. That's the limit you can with single phase. Mm. Now, you can now under the new rules, um, you can select um, uh, 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 with the energy company that you're not going to export or whatever and double that size component. But the problem is you're still relying on the excess AC to go back to the inverter, to convert back to DC to charge a battery and then reconvert back to draw AC supply in back up or after hours. Now, Whereas, I would say most customers by now would be a little bit confused with the AC, DC backwards and forwards. Are you simply saying it gives you certain limitations in the way the system is designed? Yes. So it will suit, as I said, some customers, but uh, higher consumption homes can be problematic. Um, because you just can't put a big enough solar system with it, is it? Correct, yes. Um, whereas DC coupling, you can, and, and certain products like SunGrow, you can oversize it 200%, other companies 150, mm. is that you can supply load and charge simultaneously with no restriction. Mm. And you're not limited to five kilowatts per hour charging or discharging. Depending on the size of the inverter, it can be eight or 10 kilowatts mm. or three phase now they got just recently up to 25 kilowatts charge, well, 30 kilowatts charge and 25 kilowatt discharge. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Rollo, you've been with replenishable energy for much more than a decade. You've seen panels go from 175 watts now to 450 and plus, lots of changes. Where's the whole EV revolution gonna drive us? Yes, well, <laughs> that's the big elephant in the room, isn't it? So um, I, I think just going back to a couple of things, the concern a lot of the industry has is our network, and this is our energy network in a lot of areas, hasn't have got the ability to provide if, let's say, one-tenth of all cars got converted to EV right now. Make it 30%. Well, no, I'd rather go 10 because 30% won't happen straight away. We couldn't even handle to charge. So you can imagine, even if the average battery, it's a lot of them a lot bigger, was 60, 60 kilowatt hours. And let's say they even wanted to top up one third, 20 kilowatt hours, and they all did it at once. The, the, the problem is on the localized level, um, and we're seeing it now with high rise developments, units, a lot of the ones we're seeing were only designed to supply those 20, 40 or 60 units in that complex. And then suddenly when we do the due diligence and the supply and 
communicate with Ergon, they'd be lucky if they can supply three or four cars in that complex with EV. So that's a problem on its own. And then you've got the, the household and everyone's different. Uh, some people want happy just to supply in, in single phase, that's 32 amps, 7.4 kilowatts. Some people want to charge it faster. Some people don't have access to three phase. So we're gonna say, sorry, you only got two phase, or we can get it, but then have to get it from down the street. And then you get a quote back from your energy supplier and it could cost 30, 40, 60 grand or a new um, substation, pad mount or pole mount. And that's a whole new equation again. So you're saying with EVs coming, our grid is not ready right now. It needs a huge upgrade and that'll add to electricity prices. Correct. So maybe just make your house uh, autonomous and look after your own needs. Yes. And with the battery is maybe a smart thing to do. Yes. And and I, I give credit with you, both state and federal governments recognise this. They can see that because the experts have been talking to them now for a few years about it and they are making a situation. And, and one way to alleviate that straight away is to help the individual <coughs> households, the mum and dads or whatever, um, to look after their own needs and support them by giving them um, uh, uh, um, battery, rebate. battery rebates, solar panels keep going. I think there's still room to maybe expand on the solar panel rebate. I know it's digressing, it's working a treat, but I think they may want to expand on that a little bit. Mm. Um, and with the incorporation that if you're gonna get batteries, you need to have solar panels. At the end of the day, that's gonna take a lot because solar, is decentralized, where power stations are centralized. And if you can, because there's a lot of losses that everyone's paying for to absorb in their energy bills just to get the power from A to B. Now, in metropolitan areas here, your power station's probably still 60 or 150 kilometers away. Where we are, our power station's 1,200, 1,600 kilometers away. So we can have up to 30% power loss before they get to where we are. Now, if that be from, it doesn't matter the source, coal or gas or whatever, that's a different animal again. But just to get it here, there's a lot of losses. So a lot of power, takes a lot of power just to get it to where we are. By putting solar on individual homes and businesses, there's very minimal risk, only a couple of percent losses. That's a huge difference. And then if you can incorporate a battery storage with that and um get some grid protection or become more autonomous, uh, then that's gonna help everyone. And if the government uh, can help um, with that, that'd be great. Okay. Now I hear that some of the EVs down the track, you'll be able to drive to your house, plug them in, and they will become the battery to support your house. Is that where the future goes? I, th I think it is. I, I think there's, um, I, and I, it's something that I have followed to some extent. I'm not fully across it, but uh, what you're calling um, uh, EV to grid or grid to EV, um, which the technology is there, um, I know and I fully understand on two parts. It's not just the energy market regulator like the uh, uh, AMO, um, but it's something that, you know, you, you've got a big source of power there, a storage, you need compatible inverters to handle that and to send it back to your car. A lot of people have already got solar connected. How do you integrate that? That's a totally different piece to deal with. And then secondly, I know with the likes, or we'll take a brand like Tesla, who initially was supporting it, not so sure about it now, you know, saying, because they've got warranty <laughs> issues with their batteries. Their batteries are now going to get cycled or partially cycled potentially a lot more. So not just Tesla, but now there's dozens of EV makers all over the world. China's doing a big push. How are they going to do that? I, I just saw with the Kia, a South Korean car with their uh, R9, can supply 10, I think it's 15 amps, um, back the other way. So you can connect that to a changeover switch and that could power up a house. Yes, only essential loads, but that's a good thing. Now, there needs to be more um, commonality and design process. How do we all integrate that? Because it, it's such a 
burgeoning industry um, of EV, but also dealing with the our network. What I do see good about <coughs> EV, if if it's with the storage, you know, there's there's going to be thousands and tens of thousands over the years of energy storage mobility coming around the place. And how do we connect that uh, uh, is, is something that obviously the experts are working on now. With other words, really, it's a bit of the old Rumsfeld saying, which we don't know what we don't know. Because with all the EVs, what you've just pointed out, coming into the grid, if you now cycle the battery much harder on the EV, how do you then link that with the battery warranty on the EV? So you maybe just stick to your home storage battery and know exactly what you get. Yes, I, it, it's something that I, I, we've had customers, I'll just wait till my car. I said, well, I've been waiting this for a few years already and I can't see in sight where they're going to be allowing that. Now, if customers decide to go off grid and do it themselves, well, that's their prerogative. Mm. But to this integration is going to be really interesting and it's obviously we're all sitting on the fence watching and doing our own thing. So... What I see, it's purely people want to be green. Yes, that I think that's for most of us as a side benefit that they <coughs> the excess energy they're storing for themselves, but also most of it's financial. Mm. But the, the other big factor is they want some grid security because you know with technology now that you can turn off power when the energy providers can turn power off and on whenever they want. It is really worrying people. Mm -hmm. Replenishable energy in cans. If I use you guys, do I get a bespoke solution? Yes. Okay. Do I get good after sale service? Yes. Do I get a system that is designed for my house to be able to be expanded in the future when I need more? Yes. So um, are they all good reasons to use you? Is there anything else? No, I think just mainly peace of mind and that we're known for our aftercare service. It's not so much selling the process and working the solution is one thing, mm. but just knowing that they can ring or email and find out. Now, some of them will probably answer their own questions, uh, but some people uh, um, don't realise that the information is at their tips. Mm. But that's what it's about. A lot of people ring us, again, about the adding on, oh, I want to get an EV, or I want to get hot water, or I want to do this, and they're not sure, so they're just picking our brains. It might only take two minutes or three minutes, but something that we provide, we don't charge them for it, because it gives them that point of uh, point of contact and just touching back to the customer. And that's key to keep them long-term because inevitably they want to do something else down the track. So the local energy expert for cans? Yes. Replenishable energy? Yes. I do have one last question about the people that you maybe already had in 2010, 12, 13, whatever, and they actually have a smaller type system and they wonder what to do now because they've got solar and they still get a big bill. What's your solution there? Yeah, very interesting. So back in those days where they were on a, a, a net feed-in that was um, underwritten by the state government <coughs> um, is still available. A lot of those people's the circumstances have changed. Um, it's not something that we're active with. Like, uh, we'll touch base with them, um, typically just a phone call, how's it all going? Um, oh, I'm still getting credit. Great. Yeah, it's not many of those around, but this, that's great to hear. A lot of times they've sold it, so that system now loses that benefit and the next people that have earned have changed. Um, the people that had the system before moved on to somewhere else and they want us to put a new system in. So it's been that the industry is very fluid and the type of solutions have evolved so many times since then sometimes we might need to expand on it or replace the system to that, again, communication. Because a lot of the systems back then, they could only Bluetooth connect. You couldn't do anything else. You couldn't even wirelessly connect. So so a lot of them have no monitoring. Correct. So you don't actually know what it performs. Correct. So basically, if you have an older style solar system, there are different solutions. One is refurbishment. One is replacement. Sometimes is it worthwhile to just get a really big system and not worry about the one and a half on 44 cents? Uh, absolutely. Uh, I would say 9, 9.5 out of 10. We're dealing with one at the moment is two kilowatts and he just bought the property and <coughs> without naming names of Inverter and panel manufacturer, I'm going to say we'll probably have to swap this out. And when he explained that since I think it's October 
2017 or 18, the government allowed, as long as you have full replacement for new, you're allowed to claim the rebate again on the panels uh, because you couldn't do that prior. You mm. could add but you couldn't replace. swap out, replace. Mm. Mm. Um, and that was more designed to protect from the solid dumping that was happening back then um, of – uh, none tier one panels and inverters and not properly installed systems and it was causing a lot of havoc in the industry and companies, bulk of us who were trying to do the right thing were coming across orphans or whatever and they'll come into us and go, sorry, let's start this again. This is not mm. this is not fit for purpose. So if you have a solar system and you still get a big electricity bill, I advise to bring replenishable see if the system is worth refurbishing or if you actually need a new system. Correct. And and that just doing quick needs analysis with the customer, either on the phone or on site, and see what they want to do and, you know, and, and find out what, what's their expectation. Do you charge for that? No. Excellent. Thank you so much. So, Amanda, you handle the back office at Replenishable. You get the end customer call. Give me a sample of the type of calls you get. Recently, just had a call in the last week. I've got a customer in Port Douglas. Uh, he has a couple of um, Airbnb properties, solar systems there. So he's there doing his regular maintenance and he's noticed one of the inverters are um, restarting constantly. It's a Fronius inverter, so a, a good quality <coughs> inverter. Um, it was installed by another local company that unfortunately hasn't survived survive the times. They're no longer in business. Um, That's very typical in solo, isn't it, really? Uh, yeah, look, look, it is, and many other industries. I wouldn't just say solar. Mm. Um, but it's a reputable brand. Uh, we Replenishable Energy, we are a Fronius service partner, so mm. we're more than happy to assist customers um, mm. if the original installers aren't around because we have the support of Fronius. Uh, we've gone to site. The inverter, yes, has a, a restarting error um, on the grid side, uh, yet to be determined what the cause was. The original installer hasn't applied the correct country code settings. Um, they haven't registered the system with SolarWeb uh, or provided any monitoring access for this customer. Uh, this system's been installed now for s just going on six years. So mm. it was installed in 2018. Uh, so we've looked at it and gone, look, won't be under the full parts and labour warranty with Fronius, um, but it should be under the five plus five year, which is a great warranty, um, which is a parts only. So a small call out fee, any uh, freight or shipping costs, but the component itself or any components that need replacing are covered. So we've gone gone out there, done some tests. Yep, we can pop through a warranty claim for you. Uh not the case, unfortunately, because the original installer hasn't actually registered the five plus five year warranty. Uh, so their warranty <laughs> expired after five years. So now I have a customer without a warranty on a product that he was promised would have a five plus five year warranty. Um, a manufacturer is within their rights to say, look, it's no longer under warranty and the original installer is nowhere to be seen. So he's going to have to put his hand properly in his pocket now for... Oh, an, a new inverter, correct. Mm, mm. Yeah, a new Would inverter. Would it have been worth to maybe fix the old one or not really? Uh, yes, depending on what the failure is and the board is. But to um, Fronius, yes, you can replace a board. Is it's it worth it? It's one component. Potentially we could have another failure in two to three years' time. Mm. Um, mm. He could replace it with a brand new Fronius inverter, which is what he's looking at doing. Um, many other manufacturers and products on the market, it, it's not so easy to replace components. It's usually the inverter fails, that's a replacement inverter. Mm -hmm. I mean, replenishable energy, you're based in Cairns, but how far do you actually go to install? Uh, well, we, we've gone as far as the Torres Straits, um, Cooktown, the Daintree, uh, the northern tropical tablelands out through Atherton, Melanda, out Ravenshoe. Um, we've done some government projects out in Croydon. Generally, we wouldn't typically typically go um, as far south as Townsville, but um, Mission Beach area, usually two to three hours from Cairns in a radius would be the area that we can service. And then you would also look after sales out of, uh, after these systems? Yes, we do, yes. Hmm. Yeah. How important is after sales? I mean, solar, it, I cannot see the panel move. 
Does it really need anything? The panel doesn't, but the customer does. Uh, the customer, the <coughs> customers have questions, and it's always nice to be able to ring up and speak with someone um, that has a general, you know, idea of your system. If they don't know the answer, they can look into it for you. Absolutely, you could. We could ask them to Google it. We could say, look, go onto our website. Um, you know, we can redirect them or you can contact the manufacturer. But really, we're selling them a system, but we're also selling them our service. So we, we stand by that and we're there two, three, five, six, I think, what, 12 years now after the fact, mm. we're still there. And is there any companies in local area that have come and gone? Many. Yeah. I mean, solar seems to have a very low entry barrier. So you get a lot of new companies coming, giving you really long warranties. How does that usually work out? Buyer beware. Un unfortunately, um, everyone will promise you. We, we see quotes all the time. It's quite often for customers to share different proposals of, but this company will give us this or, oh, these people, they've included monitoring. They've got back, they, they're calling it back to base monitoring. Um, they'll let us know if something happens with our system. <coughs> and we have to sort of break that down and go, uh, what does that actually mean? What, what, what they're saying is, is the manuf manufacturer have a monitoring platform and you'll get an alert when your system's offline. You know, that, that alert will come to you as the end customer. They make no mistake about it. They're not employing someone to sit in a room and watch your system mm. all day and then give you a call if something happens. Yes, they'll receive an alert, but nine times out of ten, there's no one monitoring that. It, the onus really falls on you as the end customer. And when you explain that and how it works, customers are happy with that. They just want honesty. Mm -hmm. So replenishable energy, if you would describe to me in a couple of sentences – What sets you apart? What makes you proud of the company? Mm, I'm very proud that we, 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 you know, we, we put the money where the mouth is. What we say, we deliver. And is that not the case in solar all the time? I don't believe so. <laughs> no. Well, there's some very good sales, guys. They promise a lot of things. I've heard it myself, you know. You never pay a bill again. This three kilowatt battery will supply your whole house, even so it's only 10% of consumption. What do you deal with those kind of promises when the customer has been really hoodwinked? Well, we can only let them know from our perspective. We mm -hmm. can show them the, the evidence from our customers and, and our systems in real time. We mm. can pull up different systems in different areas and, and we can show them facts. We're mm. showing them facts, not mm. promises, not empty promises. And we're not, we're not there. It, you know, it's product, it's price and it's the person. You know, we, we're selling the right product. We're selling it for a fair price. And I think we're great people. Our staff are great people. Our installers are great people. Um, in the office, lovely people. Mm. If we don't know the answer, we'll find out. Mm. Mm. Do you think happy staff gives a better customer experience? Yeah, 100%. So how do you make yeah. your staff happy? <laughs> uh, yeah, the, just just having a, a, a workplace where everyone's opinion matters. Um, we take on board any suggestions. Um, we're fair. We're not, we're not trying to install as many systems as we can each day. We, you know, we have a, a reasonable, um, a reasonable outset on how long it takes to install a good quality system. So you're not rushing it through like no. a sausage factory? No. So it's a not at all. Mm, mm. Not at all. Much like the sales process, it's not a, it's not a hard sell. It's a, the education. The same with the staff. It's it's allowing them the time, taking on board their feedback, trying to make things work. Mm. Do you get feedback from customers that they had a few years ago that really makes you happy? We get feedback that everything's fine. Really happy with everything. Um, who do you recommend to clean it? Or can I put a battery on? Or, you know, my, my daughter's now putting on a system. Like it's, it's just more of a referral, really. Mm. They don't, I mean, no news is good news, but generally when you do hear back from them, we are getting the positive feedback that, mm. you know, everything's great, everything's working. It's almost like they're surprised that it's working because there are so many stories out there, you know, on even social media, on everyone's little Facebook, you know, <laughs> community groups that, 
oh, I'm still getting a bill or I've got solar and it's not working. There's a lot of negative out there. So when we do hear back from our customers, it's it's positive, but almost like they're surprised that it's positive <laughs> and they, wow, you know, it, it actually worked. I jumped into the solar curve and I actually get in lower bills and it's actually yeah, working. It actually you. is working. That's kind of good. And they feel good about that. Mm -hmm. Like they made the right choice by going with us. Mm -hmm. So you've seen, um, how long you've been in the industry yourself, Amanda? Uh, since 2011, when we incorporated. and mm. So you would have seen a lot ahead. of companies come and go, and you might have been yeah. in industry before. Is there something in solar that sets it a bit apart with solar sharks, solar cowboys, those kind of things? Is it still around? Um, it is still around, and I guess it's just because of the age of the industry that there isn't a lot of and wasn't a lot of consumer <laughs> awareness around it in the early days. Mm. Um, and now that now there is, but there is still um, a lot of people out there that don't educate themselves, I guess, or they're not reading the right information because it can be quite confusing coming from many different angles, um, you know, that are getting sold with the shiny, the shiny sparkly, you know, bill buster ads or you know, the, the, the fancy In, advertising. Interest-free, bill-free. Yeah, free. yeah. And you've got to really say, hang on, what's your consumption? Let's look yeah. at your bills. Where's your future going? Have you got teenage daughters that are going to use more yeah. electricity going forward? So all that analysis is actually a bit of hard work. It is. And then I think some people go, well, if I'm spending a lot of money, um, it must be good. And that's not the case. So you can actually be ripped off by getting crap sold on a high price, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the $0 interest is quite an interesting point, Marcus, because there's there's no such thing as a free lunch. If, most people should know that. Mm. Um, and if you're going zero, z zero interest, somebody's paying that. That's That's been hidden into the cost of your system somewhere. Um, and to do that, you're then offsetting the, the system price, the bottom line, with cheaper components to hide that. So there's two options that you actually get, let's say, $6,000 worth of components, mm. interest-free, so I'm charging you now 11000 for it to make up mm. for it, or alternatively, I'll really get the cheapest stuff to hide the interest. That's right, yeah. Is that how it works? That is how it's working, right, um, right. and and then interestingly, they're not you're not allowed under, you know, law. There are laws that say you have to disclose that. Many aren't, and they would be what I call the solar sharks. Right, right. The disclosure is not there. Right. So when somebody hears interest free and thinks, "Oh, this is good," somebody's giving me a freebie, you're actually probably done for. You're paying interest. Right, but yeah. hidden away. H hidden away. So. Buyer beware. Mm. Mm. You help people every day with the current biggest issue that we have, which is cost of living, by helping them getting cheaper bills. When that's really achieved, is that satisfying? Yeah, the monetary side is, but for me it's more for people having the capacity to be self-sufficient, that if there is going to be a power outage, you know, the power doesn't go out, life doesn't stop. Um, we have a lot of outages in our areas, um, you know, it can be from an hour to three or four hours, you know, emergency repairs, the Ergon network crews are trying to locate where the issue is. Um, and people that have, um, you know, put their trust in us and made the decision to, to have a battery, you know, hearing that they, the power didn't go out or the battery kicked in or everything was great and, you know, my neighbours were, you know, uh, my neighbours want to come and see you, like we're really happy and, you know, they can see that it, the technology works as well. You know, that that's where I get the satisfaction. Wow. Is actually just helping people in their everyday lives as opposed to, yeah, every, it's, you know, there's a, a lot of emphasis, emphasis in solar on cost and money and, you know, return on investment. But some of it just comes down to simply being able to continue on with life, you know, with with as least disruption as you can. I mean, if I buy a couch, I'm not looking at the ROI, I'm looking at the comfort. That's right. Sometimes with solar and battery, it's the same thing. That's right. Well, I think you've done very well. Excellent, Marcus. Thank you. I you thought know. I'd keep it short and sharp. Very good. Thank you. Please support the channel by liking the video, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and check out all our other videos. Want more Energy Answered? Visit yourenergyanswers.com for quality energy products. 
tools and calculators and find your quality local installers. You're still here? I'll see you next time. Bye.